she has no idea what she has in store for her. So, recovering radically. Uh, why am I trying to torture Crystal? She can be nervous. Maybe she's ready to go. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's find out. Come on, Crystal. Let's get you in here. I was actually trying to stall so that, you know, you felt real comfortable and I was going to draw out the intro. Uh, split, split, <laughs> split coach is here. Chris Walker, Axe, uh, Black Jennifer is here. Oh, Black One oh, Jennifer. Uh, those, some of your friends, right? Is, yeah. is, wait, let me let me rephrase that. This your crew, ain't it, girl? <laughs> it's your crew. I it's your group. Your thugs, your thugs in the house. Your thugs are in the house. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Your friends are here. You have volunteered for something, and you're getting, uh, okay, I was going to say you're getting big hugs, but I'm taking them for, for myself. That's my buddy, Split Coach. Uh, everybody needs to like, comment, share, follow uh, the Split Coach, uh, and uh, every other thing that she does in life, follow her. Uh, she's awesome. Uh, great guest that I had. Uh, I am um, trying to give everybody a chance to come in because they seem to be showing up for you. Nobody's here to see me. It's a Maybe split. Are you going to be goofy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you volunteered. I, I warned you. I told you. <laughs> Fun day. I said, well, why would I? <laughs> I tried to tell you Friday. I ain't got no common sense. Um, all right. So, everybody, please remember the whole purpose of a show on a Friday on Narc Abuse TV Network is simply to have fun. We're going to talk about a number of things that can be serious, but it's simply to have fun. But first, I got to read something that you posted that no doubt was fun for you, but I have to read it because you are amazing at writing these captions. What did I write? Because <laughs> like, what did I write? Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready for this? Always ready. You volunteered for this. Okay, here we go. There was a there was a time, these are your words, there was a time not very long ago, even just earlier this year, when I would never have posted any of this, pics of me being myself, because there was someone in my life that I was allowing to directly influence and in some cases dictate my actions, even the small choices like this all due to listening to lies, allowing someone to tell me my own motives, giving way to gaslighting, self-doubt, confusion, brain fog. Well, you get the picture. And then you wrote this, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Not good. And it's called abuse. Why did you post these amazing pictures because you're, you're kind of hard to top on the making faces stuff. Okay, your faces are totally awesome. Oh, bring your camera up a little bit more so we get more of a, the actual faces. <laughs> there we go. So, so you, wrote, you wrote this for social media to absorb and take in. Why did you share this part of your life? Because a lot of people can connect with what you wrote. I think that was the same day I might have spoken with you and connected with you. Why? Why you're not supposed to? You're not supposed to bring me up. Don't bring me up. <laughs> okay, go ahead. About you, but I'm just saying that there might have been some clicks going on. Click, 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 click. Like, wait a second, because I didn't plan on doing that. Just like I said in the first yeah. sentence, I didn't plan on this. I didn't think about what I was writing. I literally like voice texted it in and just made a couple yeah. corrections. I felt like, you know what, that's it. I, if I'm going to talk about this stuff, there's so many people out there that are going through this that have gone through it. And that's how I've learned about it, too, is online, through YouTube, through these videos, through some of your guests. So why can't I help other people, too? Why can't I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to be honest. I'm not going to go through the nitty-gritty, horrible details right now. But you know what? I'm going to touch on it. And my son and I were about to get out for a date night i was taking him out to dinner and we were laughing yeah. and in a good mood you know what i'm gonna get my makeup on we're gonna go out and 
click, click, click. I just <laughs> did it on the fly. And I was like, that's it. I'm going to be real. I'm going to be real, real. You know, that's almost, that's, that's almost, that's almost a name for a podcast. Click, click, click. I just, I'm sorry. <laughs> write that, write that one down along with the other 400 that we talked about. So um, that's actually pretty good because see what you're doing is, is you're really giving encouragement to others or, uh, the way you, you posted that a few of the people that uh, I use to give an idea or two in regards to what they see here on my platform. Uh, I, I sent this over to them and they saw it and they were thoroughly encouraged by what you said because you didn't stop there. Then crystal, you said this, I seriously wasn't planning on talking about any of this out in the open, but as time passes and I continue to move forward and start to open my mouth or you start to mild off because that's what you do, right? Didn't we talk about that? Yeah, we talked. You start. Yeah. And so I love that when you said that because I totally caught what you were saying. You started to open your mouth again and write things online, respond to others, reach out to help and to connect with other women and other people. You go on the right. I have received only thankfulness back. I've been flabbergasted at the amount of people that have dealt with this, and I edit stuff, and many that are still dealing with it, and it seems like the numbers of narcissistic people in our society continue to grow more and more. I had heard of this term before, narcissistic, of course, you write, and I knew the basics of the quality, and I have encountered it and had experience with it already, mm -hmm. but not to this level. Well, I guess you could say I'm pretty much an expert now. What level are you talking about that you've experienced it? Expert level. Salute. Expert. I'm gonna. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we kind of salute you. Okay, now. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah, you were ta we're talking about romantic relationships, right? Intimate relationships with somebody who has a narcissistic who. I believe might have that personality disorder, but I'm not a therapist. I'm not a doctor. You know, the it just became clear over time as I continued to learn and actually research and listen to people's mm -hmm. signs and what. And I just kept coming back, and I'm like, obviously, I feel this way. This is clearly happening, no matter how much I don't want to believe this, because I really did fall for this person, and I've intertwined my life, mm -hmm. in everything. I've been. You sleep in the same bed with that person. You give everything to that person. You try to create a future with that person. And when you give your whole heart to somebody like I did, and it turns out to be based on lies, mm -hmm. you, know, you go back and you're like, wow, like it just, it's such a heartbreak that it's the most, it's, it is heartbreaking. Just like if your parents are narcissistic, you know, that's your, your caretaker from your early mm -hmm. childhood. And, you know, I know about that from my early years, too, um, with some figures in my life, but just not to this level. I never let it get in and I've never heard the things that I heard this man say to me. Do you know what I mean? Like about me. About you. And you thought differently, right? You thought he was going to be that person that was going to walk with you everywhere you went the rest of your life and have your back. Yeah. The things that were said to you are not the things you would ever want your son to say to a woman. I can never imagine him uttering any of those things. Like, it's not even in my wildest imagination. That's why it was so shocking, what? unbelieving for me to hear. It was, it's kind of like, am I, is this real? Like, you're pinching yeah. yourself. Because yeah. I know I'm amazing. Let me be honest. I'm not, like, conceited. <laughs> I just, you know <laughs> what? Like I knew you were going to do it. I just did I thought it was going to be later in the show. Would you? I no, really wait, why do you, why do you, why do you say that you're amazing? Because it's like, I know my heart. I know my intentions. Like, I know who I am at my core. Like, I know my yeah. thoughts, my motivations, all, everything. And for somebody to try to tell me what my thoughts and my motivations are, that they're wrong or evil, it's like, what? Like, yeah. what are you smoking, bro? No. Wait, that was, now this, this is not like this person told you this and they just met you. You're talking about somebody who's been around you and you've done things with them for them. And now they're telling you, you have ulterior motives that are not good. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Like if I'm being what, nice what? to, or if I, 
you know, we're, we're going out to eat and I'm just, the waiter's waiting on us. Mm-hmm. You, were, you were checking him out. You're, you're, you have bad <laughs> You're this awful woman. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm, I'm saying that in a nice way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're doing good on a family show. You're doing good. <laughs> so, so, so at what point did you start to recognize that you were dealing with somebody that I'm just going to say this, you could disagree, of course, because it's your life. But did it come across that he just didn't like you? You know, what's funny? That's amazing that you said that. Because after so many, so much time went by, he literally started telling me that. He was like, you know what? That he didn't I, like you? He told, he wait, said, he told you that. Yes, this is so funny that you're saying that. That's what I'm saying. He would be like, I love you, but I don't like you. You want to know the truth? I don't like wow. you, but I love you. Wow. And he, I know deep down you don't like me either. You just love me or you're just whatever, a touch. I'm like, what? Yeah, That's crazy, he was, man. He How was could a, you not what? like me anyway? <laughs> Somebody, somebody put on this on the screen on in the chat here. Toxic jealousy. So uh, at least that's a warrior in the world said that uh, it is. It was a lie and a fantasy. Did when did you figure out that it was it was a lie? Was it after the fact? After the fact, or some point in the relationship? Did you go like you know what? This is not working. Matter of fact, split coach says here uh, he didn't like himself. <laughs> so that actually is a good statement. He never admitted that, but that is true. Yeah. True story. Did it seem like? Did it seem like he wasn't? Did it seem like he wasn't g- good enough for you? In your mind, no, no. We're just talking about. Did it seem like in your mind that he wasn't good enough for you, or that he never cared from the beginning? Oh my God. Um, I didn't think until after, like when it was ending and it kind of got out of control. I was like, I realized, yeah, he's not good enough for me because look at what's going on here. Like this is insanity. Uh, But I never thought that at the beginning, in the middle, like as I I was Mm -hmm. so dedicated and and empathetic and understanding of this and and trying my best. You said that like you had a a cold or a bad disease. (laughs) you, You were... You were being understanding with quotation mark, and you were being uh, compassionate. How long? How long were you being like that before your eyes started to see something different? The whole time. Well, to be frank, I knew there was huge red flags from the beginning. After just a few months, two to three months, and that's what mm-hmm. experts tell you, right? It. All, someone can only have a mask up for about three months or so yep. before kind of yep. labor, even if it doesn't come all the way yep. down it starts to shift and that totally happened but i excused it all away just like he did on a circumstance well this is why i reacted that way and this is why because this happened and because you and you keep putting it on that circumstance well this because you have already become attached to this person the trauma bond had already been solidified between us and i was so attached to him it was like my whole world was falling apart if I thought like we weren't going to be yeah. together. That's how you know, that's toxic. That's unhealthy. Like that's not based on me being strong, Crystal. That's me based on traumatic, like re-traumatized Crystal in her weak state attached toxic. Yeah. So what, need- what? you need what? Say that again. From the beginning, those red flags were there. So it's sad for me to say, I just, thought we could work past it and he promised me all those things that we could work past it and promise after promise month after month and we move in together and it was just every single month it was the same thing over and over yeah broken he moved, he, he moved in with you we moved in together here actually okay. um i was i had moved somewhere else and it didn't work out and his lease abruptly was ending and he had nowhere to go. And I, you know, said, come with me. Like, let's, I was taking care of everything, right? Everything was going to be okay. Crystal's going to make wow. smooth. Oh. You're, you're such a nice person. You're such a nice person. But the red flags were clear. If you had to give advice to a young woman who is about to step into what you stepped into or is in that journey, uh, before her eyes bulge out and pop open, 
and she sees uh, the red flags for what they are, just question, um, what would be a couple of the red flags you think she should maybe pay attention to <laughs> as a warning? Like? That you saw. That I saw. Um, hearing uh, screams and yells and curse words and somebody saying bad things about me and then me feeling bad about myself and blaming me and criticizing me. You know, if you start feeling bad about yourself and you're being blamed, criticized, there's a guilt trip, you feel confused, you start questioning yourself. When just before you met this person, you weren't questioning yourself. Yeah. That is a clear sign. That is night yeah. and day. It's not based on a circumstance. As much as like I wanted to believe that and I convinced myself, we can all lie to ourselves. Whatever we want to believe, if we want mm -hmm. it enough, we can lie so good to ourselves, but it only bites you in the butt later. Yeah. So you you go ahead, I'm sorry, please. Go ahead, Crystal. Oh, by the way, um by the way, feel free to bring the camera up some more because I need to see those faces in full view. And so um I'm telling you, they, I was going to tell you, make one right now. I'm not going to do it. Make one right now. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so uh, you got a lot happening here on the screen. They isolate you from their friends and family is what Black uh, One Jennifer says. And uh, red flags, she has uh, three, six, seven different red flags up mentioning she's agreeing with you. Uh, they prey on your empathy and compassion. Uh, did you ever feel at some point that somebody was being a predator and you were the victim? Oh God, it's like, <laughs> it's so, I have to take these deep breaths now because I didn't have the full realization, obviously, until the very end, after he left, after I made sure everything was done, it hit me like a ton of bricks every single day and night over and over. Wow. Like somebody was just smacking me in the face with bricks. So it, that's when it really hit. Cause before it's always a question like, is this happening? Yeah. Is this real? Oh, maybe it's this. Okay. Let me, let me try to be a direct communicator again, which is the wrong thing to do. If somebody's a narcissist, right? You, I kept trying to directly communicate. Let's face this head on yeah. and let's be honest over and guess what? That just gives them more yeah. information to use against you and to confuse you more because you're the one always being honest and open and trying to deal with the real problem when they're the problem and they're never going to admit it. They're going to keep you going in circles the whole time. It's going to get worse you and worse. Did you feel yourself going in circles? I'm just curious. Did you yeah. feel yourself going in circles? Because there are, there are individuals that watch the show, and they think they're the only ones going through that. They're like, okay, maybe I need to just be better, or I just need to maybe, like you said, I just need to communicate better. Yeah. But he wasn't really, they're not really looking to communicate better. Yeah. You found that out. Yeah. Cool. The hard way. Towards the end. I realized I've done everything I can. And then I started really giving it to him, which really brings the anger out. You know, that's a real like poking the bear type of thing. I got real mouthing off. You want to talk about mouth off? I got up in his face. I had had it. I'm like, you know what? You. <laughs> well, well, let, let me help you. Let me help you with that. So it kind of sounded like this. <laughs> so your mouth kind of went like that. It just kind of. You just went rattling off and you were expressing yourself, but you were talking to somebody who was like, well, tone deaf. They weren't even locked into what your heart was trying to tell them. Yeah, he was trying to intimidate me and scare me at the end there because I started saying, you're abusive. You are emotionally, mentally uh, abusive. And, I, and then that's when he wanted to up it a little bit. Like, oh, you think this is abusive? Let me show you something. Oh, wow. Let me oh, show wow. you. And then he kind of like pushed it and put until it got scary. And then I was l actually scared. I wasn't just, but I was still facing it because I didn't care anymore. I'm at the point where I don't care and I uh -huh. hate to admit it, but I literally was egging it. I was like, you know what? You want to hit me? I was like, why don't you just go ahead? Like, I don't even care, but he wouldn't do that. But it was, there were some other physical things. Some things were broken. Some things happened here that, mm. I should have called the police that night, and I did not. And I regret you, that. I should have. You have uh, a number of people talking to you right now. on, And so I get to read this back to you so you know. Uh, Warrior in the World says they hate you for being amazing because they, because they can't be you, no matter how much they mirror you. Uh, as the others have said, they, they didn't like themselves. My, my goodness, you guys are quick, man. I just 
they're writing so fast, um, faster than I can read it to you. Okay, uh, uh, so here, what we got here, they isolate you. I told you that was from Jennifer. Uh, I saw the red flags day one. Uh, someone says uh, the move the move in is how they trap you. Uh, Split coach says I have to go. I will watch the rest on replay. Big hugs and so happy he is not in your life anymore. She's giving you props. Um, Split coach, everybody, please remember, like, comment, share, follow her page. Uh, she helps a lot of women after divorce. Uh, nowhere to run. Slow things down. Don't let them move fast or move in. Uh, laugh out loud. The confusion means that they have trauma bonded you already. There's so much happening here. People are talking of their own experience uh, relating relating to you. Uh, hello to everybody joining in. Uh, Brahm, um, of course, the real Susie Walla is here as well. Um this is textbook covert narcissist. They're talking about who you had to deal with, uh, how they, they do these relationships and find good hearted people like you. Mm -hmm. um, how, if you had to say maintaining your privacy, how has this affected, how did this affect or did it your son? That's a tough hitter question for me because I knew it was going to affect him over time once I realized things weren't getting better, even though I thought, oh, well, he's not seeing or hearing all these things that I have to. I'm protecting him and whatnot. But guess what? I was an idiot to think it wasn't going to affect him. The energy, the vibe, the facial expressions, the, th the things that were going, the behavior of somebody who cannot control their behavior their self there he would have to go yeah. in the room and shut the door and it was like well what's wrong with him why isn't he gonna eat dinner i thought he was gonna help us fix dinner and it's like what's like he's acting like the child and my child is the one acting more acting like in a, wow. what's going on that doesn't make sense and i'm like no it doesn't does it that's rude isn't it and i would make a teachable moment out of that this is rude and you know what this is not okay <laughs> And so I would make teachable moments out of it. Okay. Still put up with it over the, time. The, the poor kid is, yeah, not that poor kid, but your son is in there going like, okay, I'm more adult than he is. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Yeah. And then he's going to go back and mom, he's got to go. No, I'm just going like, mom, yeah. he's got to go. Let me tell you what. There was finally one night where he did hear a couple of things that he wouldn't normally have heard because he was supposed to be asleep. And we were even outside and on the patio and it's like, he was so hurt. He yeah. was crying. I realized he was awake. I ran in there and he was just sobbing. He was crying. I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Like I might cry just thinking about, I had to go in there and hold him oh. and console him so that he knew it's okay. You're safe. I'm right here. We're okay. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what happened. And he, let me tell you what, my son is ready to throw down. I turned around the corner and he had a bat in the corner. Oh, like, my goodness. He's like, do I need to bring this out? I'm ready to roll. <laughs> I was like, oh, honey, he heard a couple. He, he is a male version of you. I think I've heard that from somewhere. Oh, wait, from you. He's a male. So yeah. he's ready to throw down because, well, he's like his mom. Confusion 101 gaslighting crazy making is what a number of people are saying here. They've experienced it, too. Uh, the trauma is a cycle. Um, you know what? Before you met him, how would you describe the crystal before you ever met him? In three words, how would you describe that crystal before you ever met him? Apologetic, daring, authentic. Dar apologetic, daring. Unapologetic. Unapo oh, unapologetic. Okay, that sounded better. Unapologetic, daring, and what else? Authentic. Okay, let's talk about the daring crystal. How would you describe the daring crystal? Well, daring crystal's a bit dangerous. So sometimes <laughs> this, right, go ahead. This this uh, new daring crystal, the smarter daring crystal, knows when to reel her in just a little <laughs> and when to let her roll because it's time to face things head on and be unfiltered. There's a time for me to be unfiltered and I love it and I'm down with it. I can 
be myself. And there's a time when you need to pull back a little bit. You can't yeah. just go yeah. around mm -hmm. it's on who you're talking to, right? Your audience. Mm -hmm. where yep. you, um, what's the impact of what you're saying and how yep. it affects other people, you yep. know, all of that. So I understand that a lot better. And I have to say my acting training, like the acting that I've mm -hmm. evolved with, mm -hmm. Or my yeah. out there actually listening. Um, it helped me with that. It helped me be more daring and more confident because I learned how to be more present and perform in front of people and mm -hmm. just come from within. Whatever you're feeling in, inside, what you're doing, yeah. you're playing a character, you're, you're being yourself, like yeah. I am, whatever it is, yeah. just to let it come out and not be afraid of what you look like what you sound like, what you're saying, like, don't worry about it. Just, let you, know, <laughs> you know, I find you to be and here we go. You keep you keep it real. You have a very hashtag authentic spirit. Um, you have the ability to hashtag rebuild strength in not just yourself, your son, but others. And hashtag you have an amazing recovery journey. Because would you say you're just now starting your journey or have you already been on this journey? I would say I'm in the better phase of this journey now because I'm having more fun. I'm feeling more positive okay. like myself. I'm feeling more like myself than in the really hard beginning part of it where it's like really rough. So at one point you were like uh, more angry than having fun? I would say there's some anger in there, but a lot more sadness and depression. I was okay. crying a lot. Like I have never cried so much in my entire life put together as I have in the last year, hands down. Like I have spilled so many tears for hours upon it. I didn't think there was that much inside. It, it all uh -huh. came out mm -hmm. um, <laughs> all at once. And for, for, for the relationship, for the fact that you were with someone you never thought was going to abuse you, the tears, if you had to line it up and some young woman's hearing this and trying to get an idea, why can't I stop crying? Why do I feel so depressed? Kind of give her some measure of what yours was like. Great question, actually, because I'm glad you said that, because I realized as I was feeling all of that, mm -hmm. it quickly turned. It wasn't about the relationship hmm. loss. It wasn't even about that anymore. Okay. Do you know what I was grieving? I was grieving no. a couple things, but the main thing was betraying myself. Uh, Self -be okay. You betray yourself because you lied to yourself yeah. because you, you go down this road where you know you could have been listening to your inner t intuition and yourself and your, it was in there, but you continue mm -hmm. to listen to lies. You continue to listen to someone mm -hmm. else and look at that and want to trust on that instead of yourself. Mm -hmm. It is self betrayal, yeah. grief to the, yeah. to its fullest. It is heartbreaking more than yeah. the loss of a person, a relationship. Yeah. It, well, it, it's the loss of you, the individual person. Uh, it's almost like you, you took the first seat in disrespecting yourself. You know, you can't even really point a thousand percent at one person, no. but you can, even if that little one percent is is you're looking at it going like, mm, I got to see where I'm accountable. Doggone it! I let I let the drawbridge down for that knucklehead. <laughs> it's like, uh -huh. I should have been pulling it up when I saw the first red flag. You know, more people agree with what you're saying right now that have been on the show. Hundreds of people that have been on the show and others, they're thinking and have said the same thing you just said. That that was the hardest part. Yeah. That the the crying shifted or the the depression shifted from worrying about that person and what happened or came to an end or the relationship. And it was like the relationship with myself. I just let myself down like huge. Yeah. And especially when they have children, they look and go like, oh, wait a minute, I got to make sure I don't ever let this happen again. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of where you get to? I'm just asking or feel yeah. you are now is like, nah, that's not going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh my gosh i just can't i thought well i finally got to a point because i've been i've struggled with codependency i've struggled with all that you know i settled yeah. down when i was very young i was brought up like christian perspective in the church of like you know you find yeah. somebody and you marry them and you settle down and mm -hmm. so right right i always 
was like that. And I was always, you know, dating, there was someone else to date or be with or be in a relationship, right. mm -hmm. relationship jumping. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I finally got to that point where I was like, you know what, I don't even care about being with somebody. Finally, yeah. I need to be okay with myself. I need yeah. to be good with my son, which I am, but it's like, I need him to know it's okay. Like, look, like this is okay wrong again like it's okay and i have those moments with him and i talk openly about okay, yeah. what happened in a child age appropriate way of course but right right, right. well he he's knows. he's able to understand that you're able to navigate beyond that circumstance yeah and that circumstance is not bigger than the beauty of who you are as a person because i cool. find you truly fascinating not simply because you can make 15 billion faces uh, and you have an amazing ability to make other people feel seen and heard. Uh, but there's so much happening on the screen. I, before I say the next words, I got to tell you this, uh, their love and hate goes on and off like a light switch. Did you experience that? Yeah. That's from that's war, war, warrior in the world. He wrote that. So have you experienced for that? Go ahead. Yeah. Like all the, t that's why it's so confusing. That's where the confusion in the brain because you're like, wait a second, everything was just fine. We were, I was feeling so in love and you were, you know, all these things. And then all of a sudden it's like, I didn't do anything wrong. Literally nothing happened. <laughs> I didn't like to make you upset, nothing. Yeah. But they're gonna find yeah. something because like they say, you're not happy with yourself. They don't like them or love themselves. So mm -hmm. something is gonna set them off. There's gonna be some dumb trigger that it doesn't matter. It's not about me and I continued to take responsibility and try to figure it out like a mathematician problem solver, like it was going to be some magic formula. Right. No. The you magic could never formula. get, you could <laughs> never get an answer. You could never figure out the formula, let alone get an answer. If you brought in a formula, no matter what you did, when you, when you try to make sense of everything, did you just finally give up trying to no, Or did you just go like, you know what, I'm going to keep trying this. I'm going to keep trying to talk to him and talk to him and, I did until things blew up, which I refer to that evening where he said, oh, you think that's abusive? I'm going to show you what's up. Oh, wow. That was the evening that really broke my heart all the way because I had to, le I had to leave. Like, I literally couldn't even, I had to get out of here. I ran to my car with nothing but my keys and left and realized I cannot do this. Like it's, it's yeah. beyond it. it. It creates headaches. It creates physical um, conditions and pain. And people know about this and have experienced that because of the f mental, physical, spiritual, um, the cognitive dissonance, the mm -hmm. confusion that is purposefully created. It has created physical pain in me. And I have had what they call a nervous breakdown, like my nerves activated. And now I have nerve pain like nerve problems that's also associated with this i have an injury as well that i found out about on my neck but it's like it a lot of people have fibromyalgia they suddenly have this and, that, and they go down the list some people yeah. have had a stroke because yeah. they've taken too much of this and it's like if you feel like your body is being affected after your mind your heart it's like you got to get yourself good or you will not be okay physically I probably would have ended up in the hospital. I could feel it. And I started to say that, you, you know what? You're going to put me in the hospital. I'm going to be in the hospital if I don't get out of this mess. And he, how dare you blame me for making mm -hmm. you feel like that? Like it's your, <laughs> yeah. like I'm doing that to you. I'm not physically harming you, blah, blah, blah. But it does because your body, your cells in your body are listening and receiving all of this negative stuff. It did at any point, did your family ever come in and go like, hey, look, you're dealing with a crazy person? Did anybody, did friends, yeah. did anybody yeah. come in? Everyone. No? Oh, everyone. Gosh. Did you say everyone? Yeah. Okay, if I would have met you, I would have been the first one. Let me tell you something, girl. That that man not good for you. <laughs> that man's not. Wow. But That's it didn't like... make sense. But it didn't make sense at the time because you were trying to make it work or you just said, well, maybe he'll change. Or he's promising to change. I'm just asking. Um, I think for a while, I was hoping and believing that he would change. And I was also embarrassed because I had 
gone to mm. such degree of a commitment and I was, okay. it's, it's a pride, it's an embarrassment. It's like, I've done all of this. Let me try my hardest. Let me keep going and give mm. it my all before I just give up. I've already done yeah. all of this. This is a big mm -hmm. deal. This is going to be a big mess. And so, and yeah, the promises, the belief, you're wanting to believe you're, I'm still attached to this person. Even with all the bad stuff, I am still addicted, attached to this person. I'm calling it what? that now because... You know, when you can't, when you're not able to be apart from somebody that long, like you have such, like that person was saying, like a toxic jealousy that he had for me. But it's like, I was addicted. Maybe I didn't have a toxic jealousy, but I was addicted, uh, attached to him. You, you, which is you felt attached to him, but did, you didn't really feel he was attached to you maybe? Or yeah. every now and then? They can't really be fully attached, but they no. they go back and forth, right? Where they're like, you're the best thing in the world. You're like the best woman, like I, my dream woman. Like I dreamed, of, I manifested being with you because I dreamed of somebody like you. And then the next day, like a thought hits their mind of some, some flaw that I have, right? Because I'm a human being. I have flaws. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. And they think of that. And then all of a sudden, I am the worst woman. I am like a demon. Well, I, I've heard that before. Demon. Really? Um, I'm a demon. <laughs> you know what? I I okay. am always I am always surprised about the things people are called in these in these relationships with a narcissist. And uh, somebody said here, uh, gas uh, confusion, of course, one on one, uh, crazy making. I mentioned that a little bit earlier, but uh, also they love preying on single moms. Uh, is what uh, somebody's telling from their experience. Uh, you walk on eggshells when you're around them. Uh, you are purging their toxic energy. Um, there's so much. Uh, Jennifer, black one Jennifer, sends you hugs. You're getting hugs from her. Um, I do have this. Leave, no contact, go ghost. Um, says, he moved in with me. He tried to entrap me into a quick marriage. Ouch. Uh, they are terrorists. They are terrorists uh, near the end. Once you know, you know about them. They will do anything to try to isolate and destroy you. Did you ever experience where he literally turned on you and start telling friends or telling others that you weren't all there? Yeah, at the end here where he realized, because it had been months, I was like, you got to go. He kept saying he would go, but he was just feeding me lines. And I was like, if you don't go, like, it's going to be a problem. And then kept pushing it and pushing it. And then I had, I started doing and saying things that were going to push him out. That were a little, that were going to be problematic. Okay. That alone, I want to know, but we'll get to that in a minute. Go ahead. You go know, ahead. I don't, so, know, I don't know about that. Um, we'll see. <laughs> okay. No, we, we're not going to, we're not going to say that, Crystal. We'll all use our imagination, but go ahead. Because we'll it finally got to the point where yeah there was one night in here and he in the bedroom locking the door closing it and just mouthing off about me calling his friend who's got like making sure he just went to town saying all these things that i did or what i said or how awful i am and how he like playing the victim the whole yeah and it's like really like it's he sound like you sound like a different person like Jekyll and Hyde, just how they say it. you switch from one side to the next. Like all of a sudden, he's like this evil man. So he was a so he was a drama queen. Yeah. <laughs> That's a joke. All right. So, it, what would what do you say would be the thing that triggered him that you would do, or your son, or somebody would do that would get him riled up? You know what? Let me tell you something funny. Um. Don't say don't say making facial expressions. No. <laughs> no. I won't say that. But I will say the cell phone, my cell phone was a trigger for him. What? Wait, wait. Your cell phone. My cell phone. So early on, I will say this. This was one of the red flags I should have obviously dealt with. He when I was staying with him one night before we ever moved in, he went through my phone. I didn't have a password on it at the time. 
and he went through my phone one night all these messages like old ones like yeah. i was okay. in the acting world and there was a lot of people a lot of men that would re and just say things and there was old you know friends in there this is, and it was just there was a lot of men liking my photos and people talking to me and he went through all of it like before i ever knew okay. him and ever uh -huh. since he did that it was like he was traumatized by my social media or my phone or you know and always blamed me for being some kind of an attention uh hog or it's like because people think i'm attractive like this man or these people are reaching out to me it's suddenly my fault now or the way i responded he didn't like because i didn't block someone immediately yeah. and yeah. i never did that unless somebody was being inappropriate or you know i never did that before and so did you did you did you decide to stop wearing makeup and not do your hair and just say okay then i'm gonna just walk around <laughs> Do I'm you know, just gonna walk around with a sheet, a sheet covering me, uh, with two little holes in it, and a part for me to breathe, and just. You know what? I would have never imagined, but as it got towards the end, like as time went by, I became so annoyed with some things that he would say when I would go to work. That I did. I I stopped wearing makeup. Literally. Really? Often. You did? You seriously? For a you short did? Time. Wow. I did. And I started dressing different. Like I wouldn't wear a dress for a while. Um, wow. Yeah. Because I got tired of hearing it. I just didn't even want to hear it because I would want to scream and like beat my head in the wall if I heard it one more time. You, you literally stopped being you. Yeah. For a bit. Okay. So Mo the chick, she writes this in the chat, waking up several times at night, scared for no reason. Hmm. Um, and of course, others are sending you hugs. Uh, you're getting um, you're getting sad faces, and you're getting applause. Everybody's got different feelings. Um, Mo the chick also says that's understandable, Crystal. I can relate to the phone being a trigger. Okay, so that's that's really a thing. I'm sorry, you guys. I I am kind of green at this. That's really a thing that the phone is a trigger. That the, yeah. that the guy, or even maybe this is a woman, maybe some of you guys out there had the same thing. I'm just finding this quite interesting. That's a trigger for them to say that you're just unfaithful or attention uh, seeker. That <laughs> is pathetic. They're That's projecting. Pathetic. You see Warrior in the World, that next comment? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. You they can read are, it. Go ahead and read that one. It read says, one. Your, your cell phone, why? Because they use their cell phones to cheat, triangulate, and find their, find their side supplies. They're projecting onto you because they're, they're doing it and looking at they're all these doing people. It. And I, once I realized that, I started saying that. I'm like, you know what? You're saying that because you're looking at you're other doing it. On you're and doing you're it. Like yeah. You're not, and you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, wait, yes, you are. <laughs> Just the simple fact you're thinking I'm doing that and you're accusing me of it and you have no proof of that. Let me see your phone. That's what you just said. Let's just have a phone off. Okay. Let me see your phone. <laughs> but what did we say? Toxic jealousy. Uh, everybody's agreeing with you. That happened real quick. We said that and all of a sudden it just like the whole chat just blew up. Um, so the uh, pack coach is here. Uh, she says, Anastasia says, I relate. So everybody's, Mo, Mo the chicks. Mo the chick says, "Yep." A pack pack coach says, "What is it? It's Friday. Did I just lose my tongue? I just okay. You take over the show." Uh, <laughs> yes, it's a it's a thing. Uh, the smartphone is a narcissist playground. That's yep. what. Uh, wow, you guys are teaching me stuff. Okay, you guys are cool. Uh, and of course, yes, girl. I mean, they're all giving you love here on the screen. Like Jennifer, I hate to keep saying that, but let's just say Jennifer. Jennifer, yes, even. Me. It, <laughs> that's her last name <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you for saying thank you for saving yeah. me i'm laughing i'm not laughing because that's her last she name white. i'm laughing because she white, but her last name black <laughs> i know i'm just saying i'm looking at a picture here and she don't look chocolate so i'm just saying me neither uh, what's my name like, my but, yeah yeah but you know <laughs> that's different you're white chocolate so that's different <laughs> that's uh, so sweet Okay. Hey, white chocolate is the best. All right. So, um, <laughs> all right, here we go. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to try to get some today. And okay, thanks. Now I know what I'm going to do this weekend. All right, here we go. 
Uh, smartphone, as we said, Narcissist Playground, everybody's agreeing with you. And back to Jennifer. Yes, even non-significant other friend can have cell phones as a trigger. Hmm. They're guilty. Everybody's saying they're guilty. Man, you guys are smart. They all use the same playbook. Get access to your phone. Others are saying that happened to them, too. Yeah. Is that? Go ahead. If you see something, you want to read it. You can read it if you see it. Yeah, we would give each other access to our phones, actually. We would, I, he would be like, oh, I'm not hiding anything. You can go through my phone anytime. And I, w I would say the same thing. We would be proven to each other. Look, we're not hiding anything. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> you guys are like, you guys are like, uh, you're like, like uh, those gunfighters. And you're just standing in the middle of the street going like, no, you go first. No, you go first. No, you go I first. I would have to, I had to do that to be able to even live with him because it was like I was hiding wait, something. Wait, wait, put the camera up because you know we like to see the whole of you. There we go, right there. All right, go ahead. Yeah. I didn't even show everybody the mask. Yeah. Whatever, whatever. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, yeah, so, like, I would go through his phone. That was something I would have never imagined doing either. I would have never gone through somebody. I'm not a jealous person, but he made me like that because, or I allowed him to make me like that. Because you keep spending time around this person you're intertwined with, you're going to become more like them. So I became more jealous because he wow. wanted me feel that way he did things and said things on purpose to make me feel jealous and to incite that feeling because it made him feel good and he admitted it one time and so it made him feel wanted or something i don't i don't yeah. get it that's like a total waste of time to yeah, make somebody said, jealous he said well you know oh so you do care like you really love me you really <laughs> care about me because of the way you react okay but you weren't even thinking about it until he brought it up so technically you weren't even jealous I mean, well, I don't know. It's too, it's, it's too a jealous person. Unless you bring up something purposefully and you start saying things and like, I start yeah. observing things because you're trying to get me to feel like that. Well, and well look, it, well, had you been through that before in other relationships? I'm just curious. Not to that level. I had been with somebody not lived with them, not that close, but I had, but they were insecure. Maybe, maybe they yeah. were insecure. And there was some narcissism there, but not to this level. And there was some emotional roller coaster and like, you know, yeah. the jealousy factor. Mm -hmm. And, and it was also a very intense physical relationship, just like this one. It has all of those characteristics, right? Okay. Right. Where they say that like a lot of narcissistic people are very, like you have such an intense physical attraction with them that it's, it, that's another reason why it's hard to pull away. Cause it's part of the attachment, like addiction, you know, uh, tr trauma bond thing. So I'm going to ask this question because I got somebody writing here. Maybe I don't know whether you can see it or not, but mold a trick. Mold a, <laughs> I don't believe I just mold said that. Mold, <laughs> Mo, Mo says, Mo says, turning your back. I can't let you out. You can't, you're not allowed in public no more. No, just <laughs> turning your back to them while they are talking is also a trigger. I don't, I, oh God. that's bad. Uh, they all, uh, I, I don't know. You're brave to turn your back on them. I'm probably, I would be backpedaling the whole time I guess just to keep an eye on them. That's probably better than what I did a couple of times, which is getting up in the face and, and starting to go yell back. Finally. I'm like, you know what? I'm about what to is, throw What down. is wrong with you? <laughs> Why would you do that? Because at the end you don't care. Suddenly something. You got a shiv? You. Are you? Are you carried a shiv or something? Do you have a knife that you just start? You just like no, but you I, should. Two, I should. You baby, I two, you baby Tupac, you baby Tupac or something. You, you know what? I am from ATL. That's where I'm from. Oh my! Oh my <laughs> goodness! I rest my case. There's nothing else to talk about. She got ATL in her. That's where I'm from. I don't. I don't think I want to mess with you. Uh, the the pack coach Anastasia says I wasn't allowed to have passwords on his phone. Or password on a phone. Yeah. So, uh, I don't. That's I don't okay. know about that. that Y'all gonna say I don't know about that. That's that's kind of control. That's kind of controlling right there. That's a new hashtag. Um, I don't know about. That. <laughs> I, hey, yeah. I don't. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't. I don't hey, you know what? Sometimes my ghetto comes out in full display. Uh, <laughs> any. Anything can trigger them. Oh, thank you, Mo. Mo's puts on a happy, uh, funny. Uh, she's laughing at us. So I guess thank you uh, that we were able to make you smile and laugh. 
But I'm telling you, some of this stuff you guys are saying in the chat and that you're talking about, I don't know how you people, I mean, you guys are good. You put up with this kind of stuff. You guys what are nice people. What do you mean people. you people? You be, yeah, hey, 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 this ain't airplane the movie. I can say, I can say you. <laughs> okay, wait, I got to read this. I got to read this that you, you wrote this because I don't know. Maybe you should write a book. You know what? You need a podcast show. That's what you need. You anybody here, anybody show. here today that's watching this or in the comments on the replay, if you think that Crystal Nicole Black should have a podcast show, just just put a happy face or say yes or anything like that. Just put it in there because I'm telling her she needs to start her own podcast. Okay, here we go. You wrote, things today are clicking and confirming for me what I need to be doing. Always looking to help and to connect with someone and make a difference no matter what I'm doing for work or in any area of my life because it's just how I am. True that. Tell, tell me, describe to me the clicking and the confirming and the connecting. That could be a name of a show too. The clicking, confirming, and connecting that, that makes Crystal who she is. Notice all the C's that I put across there. Uh, clicking, confirming has taken place and connecting with other people. This is who Crystal is. How is it that things were, have started to click and confirm to you where you need to be going? And that's part of just how I am. Like, I have to connect with people. It's like, and we're all like that. It's part of our human desire to connect, right? It is ingrained in us as human beings, whether you know it or not, it's in there. And I've always been that way. But because of what I've gone through with this, and I've gone to this next phase after this hard phase of like starting the recovery and just rebuilding and moving forward, I'm feeling more like myself. I'm being expressive again. This is how I am normally. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Instead of sad, <laughs> opie, and like traumatized. Trauma, trauma. Yeah, you know, it's true. Um, but when and it was, I'm not, I'm not just saying this, but it was when I talked to you that day. It's not an accident. Oh, you're talking about God when you were talking to God that day. Talking. About oh wait, you, you mean? I mean, I talk to God. You know, whenever like when I'm driving, I'm oh, like. Okay, this is not confession. This is not church. Okay, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut you off there, but that's very important. Keep that, keep, you know, incessantly praying. That's beautiful. Yeah. I don't even realize I'm praying sometimes. I'm like, I guess I just prayed because I was just, oh, okay, cool. But <laughs> you got a, you have a prayer, you have a prayerful attitude. And by the way, you're getting some yeses, you're getting some yeses and some thumbs up and a heart, uh, leave, uh, no contact, go ghost. And, uh, of course, um, White Jennifer, I mean, Black Jennifer said the same. No, just kidding. Uh, Jennifer gave you a happy face. So you're getting people molded, chick. Uh, hopefully others will join in. But you are now starting to recognize that you can click connect. Uh, and as it were, how would you put it? This, this, is a ver this is important to me. The confirming part. Clicking and confirming, but the confirming. Yeah. You were saying that you and I got a chance to talk, of course. We did the show prep. Mm -hmm. And you were saying, go ahead. It's true. When you when I talked to you and you had reached out to me, I was kind of afraid, honestly, to respond to you at first because mm -hmm. I was like, what am I getting into? Who is this person? Like, mm -hmm. oh Lord, of course, because it's social media and you you don't know. And who I told you, I told you specifically, stop calling me Lord. But go ahead. Oh Lord. <laughs> like, anyway. All right, um, go ahead. I'm sorry, I had to throw that in. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, but it, it did when I'm so glad I answered you and that I was open to talking to you because it really brought me out of that kind of fear phase again that I was still holding on to a little bit because I'm, I was scared about social media and who's out here and who else is going to try to take advantage of me and who mm. else is going to lie to me and who else is going to, am I going to yeah, right. look cool yeah. for, right? Cause yeah. mm -hmm. I just went through that. And so it's a fear, but it's like, wait, I, I'm learning. I've already learned how to trust myself again. I've already gotten to that point. So why am I acting and thinking that I need to step out in faith and trusting myself again, yeah. trusting my instincts and my intuition. Yeah. Yet once again, as I'm relearning that yeah. and, 
that is part of the confirmation because it's every time you do that, it's like, see, Crystal, you can trust yourself. It's okay. Yeah. You don't have to keep second guessing and looking around nope. and looking for another nope. sign and asking, what do you think? What do you think yeah. I should do? Yeah. Guess what? I don't have to ask anybody because I already know. <laughs> you you know you know what you need to do, and then we became quite apparent the the little bit of talking that we did. Um, I I just the hearts that have gone across the screen while you have been talking. I'm I'm listening to you and smiling, hearing the growth that you have uh, happening from your heart and what you're talking about. And I know people right now that need to hear what you're saying. They're going to watch this back later. They are they're not hearing the live, but they were waiting to see this show. And they're going to watch it when they're done with work and other things today. Uh, they're looking to hear your show uh, because they're looking to be encouraged by what you're saying. The, the, the part of you that I find unique is outside of the amazing ability to do as many faces as Carol Burnett <laughs> that you do and your ability to make other people feel comfortable and special is that you have an amazing ability to give jabs of encouragement. You could, you could keep going, and, and, and there's this huge deluge of information, but you don't. It's like you give it. I, what I imagine is, is that you talk to us very similar to the way you talk to your son. That's just in my mind. I don't know. But you kind of give that, and then you stop. Yeah, it's kind of like a bunch of little jabs, but not too, too fast. It's, it's like different for each person. That and that's why I say you should have your own show. You need to have a show in which you're able to be accessible and approachable to people and give them information and things that will help them. And some sponsor uh, affiliates and others uh, will be happy to pay you to keep that show on the air because uh, you're very talented. And, and you know, you have connections to, with people uh, that you've either worked with or done auditions with, and you can bring them into the show. Uh, so others are agreeing with me. They are not disagreeing with me uh, on the screen and in the chat. So that's good. Love and blessings to all of you is what we're getting. I guess Warrior World is either here or about to leave. Uh, Jennifer, or Black One Jennifer. Jennifer, man, what is wrong with me? I have too many shows this week. Uh, do you... Do, <laughs> you're too funny do you have a self-care mantra i was like i cannot believe she's asking me that i um, know i'm looking at it too and i'm going like wait a minute that sounds like one you talk in private about but that's a good question in public i love it do you have a self-care mantra you i have different ones that i started looking up or just making up for myself actually recently mm -hmm. it's funny she asking that because i had sent her some uh self-care mantras not too long ago oh, wait <laughs> maybe nope maybe that's what it is she's looking for some new ones from you now yeah probably okay so i'll i'll, I'll help i'll help she can make this a mantra uh hashtag authentic spirit she can put that on a mirror and write it in lipstick yes. i don't know um uh hashtag recovery journey yeah. Uh, hashtag rebuild strength. Okay. If you had to describe your your strength that you recognize you have after surviving dealing with a knucklehead and a troublemaker, somebody that you that was not stable enough and good enough to be in your life, that man wasn't good enough for you. How would you describe the strength? What is one of the strengths that you've recognized you have after having to kick him to the curb and get him out of your life. What's one of the strengths that you recognize about yourself? Oh my God. I guess I'm stronger than I thought I was. And I'm more resilient than I thought I was here at the end. I really thought I was destroyed. I, there was some things going on where I'll be honest with you guys and I'm not afraid to say it. I was literally suicidal for a couple of days there. And I have never been, I have never experienced that before in my life. I would have never imagined that I would have literally felt like that, been thinking and like actually thinking about it. And like, yeah, I was in a really dark place because of something in particular that I don't know, like when I'm going to be open to sharing about it, but I know it'll help a lot of people when I'm ready. When you're ready. Yeah. yeah. But, and it's something that, I never thought I had to deal with, and it's something that was really tough for me, and it sent me into a dark place for a couple of days. And what right. I want to call a spiritual attack, 
mm -hmm. because that's how it felt because there was things hitting me and a darkness hitting me. And that's where that, um, yeah. you know, suicidal mess mm -hmm. came in and it was like, yeah. Whoa, I need to deal with this. I, I knew I needed to feel that and let it pass through, but it was also really scary because you're right. really thinking about that. So I also let it flow through and I started writing a bunch of things and letting all mm -hmm. of that nasty and bad stuff come out on paper. And I, right. and it, when I was done after two days of all that, I had no idea what I wrote. It was a flurry of just craziness. You you did you you read it back? Did you did it make any sense? Did you take a look at it, or was I it? I did read a lot of it back, and it was so disturbing. And you couldn't finish it, or you couldn't. I'm just I asking. Like, I need to put this away because it would just make me start to tear up and. Yeah, of course. You know, right. Get yeah. set all over. It's like. But I didn't throw it away either. Like a lot of people would say, oh, you're supposed to burn that. You're supposed to throw that away once you get that out. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want to. <laughs> but, but you were able to but you were able to purge it. You were able to purge it. And see, that's what I, you know, okay, so here we go. Notes on Crystal. Notes on Crystal. I've never done this before, so I'm going to do it. You're the first person I'm going to do this with. The notes on Crystal that I have. That's not what it says at the top. This is just notes that I have. I'm just telling people. Uh, so, uh, Crystal, uh, mouthing off, motives, keep it real, fierce, transparent, resilient, authentic, uh, authentic spirit, uh, recovery, recovery journey, rebuild, strength, gaslighting, self-doubt, confusion, brain fog, abuse, controlled, authentic, and then more importantly, how we're going to end this show today, what are crystal's values what are your values crystal wow that's a really good question i think one of my values now like is being true to myself being true to my voice um you know i hate i hate to say it like this this is how i was brought up and i'm not saying i don't have a faith or i don't have any beliefs other than that i'm but i was brought up in christianity and in the church and in that faith so hard though so hard and i'm an extreme person that i took it so mm -hmm. extreme and i and some of the teachings that were being taught at me were you can't trust yourself you can't trust your feelings you need to trust god here's the word of god and you need to only trust in this because your heart might deceive you because there's some things like that in the bible that can be turned you know and that mm -hmm. really twisted my thinking i allowed that to happen for a long time i was so it messed me up a little bit, which it shouldn't have done, but it did. And now I'm like, as I've gone through my adult years and I've come into my own values, you're asking, it's like, you know what? I can trust myself. And my son has that faith background as well, but I don't take it to that extreme and I don't make him go to church all the time and I don't cram it down his throat, you know, and I teach him, you can trust yourself. You listen to yourself because you know what's right and wrong because what do you believe, Harrison? You believe, oh, God lives inside of you and, you, and you're and you one? Okay, so you can trust yourself. So I don't try to make it all about trusting this entity and God and all these. It's like if, if you believe that, then God's inside of you, that you can trust yourself and your own intuition and your own voice. And so that's a big value of mine. Like that's number one because that has – it it has made – or break my life, make or break, you know, like your, that's it. So your, your biggest value right, that you bring to the table that helps others is that you make sure now you listen instead of deny what you know you hear inside. If I understand that correctly, I'm just saying it. I know. Because, I'm you know, when people, when people, no, you didn't, no, you were excellent. You were right. You know what? You stuck the landing. It was beautiful because you expressed your heart. But see, a lot of people that are watching this, and I repeat, a lot of young women are starting to watch the show more often. They feel like they can't trust themselves to 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 make a decision. Yeah. And that's no way to live. Mm -mm. That is just no way to live. As a father of daughters, I'm telling you, that's no way to live. I want my daughters to be able to make a distinct decision without having to think they need a, another person that's going to second guess them and mm -hmm. run every time they need to be comfortable with themselves to make a decision. And that's what I see in front of me. You're, you're an amazing down to earth person who wants the best for her son. 
Uh, and everyone here, uh, as I told you earlier, so, uh, warrior in the world says love and blessings to all of you. Uh, he's sending uh, kindness to you and others that have joined and passed through. Um, they've got a chance to meet you. But now it's time for you to go to that whole nother level and, and, and reach a bigger audience. And uh, I look forward to one day you doing that, that you, that you have a bigger audience that you talk to uh, instead of, of course, you know, we're doing this in some undisclosed location in California by the beach, which, you know, I, we can't tell you because then we will be shut down by those who, narcissists who chase us. No, I'm just joking. I'm making all that up. Uh, but we are by the beach. But what I was going to say is um, uh, I find you to be refreshing, at least honest. Um, but I'm going to do a little thing with you here. You can call it a game if you want. You had no idea this was coming, but here we go. I'm going to say a word, and you have to say how, how it affected your life. You're the first person I'm doing this game this way. Okay. Normally, I say a word, and people have to say what pops in their mind. That's an easy game. Right. But for you, <laughs> no, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something different. You're the first person I'm doing this game with, and here we go. By the way, uh, Brahm says beautiful, and he's sending love your way uh, because of the statement that you just made. Uh, concerning your values. All right, here we go. You're ready. You sure you're ready. I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five words. When I say those words, you're going to say how the, it's affected your life or how you experienced them. Okay? All right, here we go. First word, gaslighting. Oh, snap. Okay. Oh, snap. Okay, that's the answer. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. No, no go ahead. Oh, snap. How has how's gaslighting <laughs> affected your life? It's confused me. It's made me doubt myself. It's made me question my voice. What I was just saying is my number one value. It's wrecked my value and torn me apart because it has made me question everything, even the little things that I know to be true, as well as the even deeper truths. Even the little things that you know are true, mm -hmm. you begin to question them from mm -hmm. gaslighting. All right, next word. The word, here, here we go now. The word is transparent. Transparent. I will tell you when I learned how to be more transparent without apology and without worrying about filters and pleasing people, when I learned how to do that um, some years ago, and now I'm bringing it back again, just being me. It has blessed my life. It has blessed other people because they want transparency. Like you said, they want That's authenticity. Right. They want that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, good. I'm blessing myself because the life is flowing through me and the love is flowing through. And yeah. it must come out because then other people feel it. I'm not trying to do anything. Or be, I'm just being myself. And being transparent is a huge blessing on both sides. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I love that. <laughs> All right, next next word. That was word number two. You're going to have five words. That was word number two. And each word, just tell us how it has affected your life. Okay? The next word is self-doubt. Self-doubt sucks. Those are two, word, two words, but self-doubt. <laughs> how has that affected you? It has messed up my decisions. It has messed up my mind. It has made me feel bad about myself when I could have been feeling good and making better decisions. So That's so cool. That's so cool. <laughs> I'm telling you, you need your own podcast show. All right, here we go. Next word. That was word number three. Here's word number four. You're going to have five words. So here we go. Word number four. You're just going to say how this has affected your life. Here we go. Brain fog. Got some serious brain fog that I've dealt with this year, actually, specifically because at the end, I've had more brain fog and coming out of it than I've never had that before. I'm talking brain fog. I've had short term memory loss, working memory problems. I've been at the grocery store and been like, where am I? What day is it? Did I drive here? How did I get here? I'm, what am I here to buy? Like, literally. <laughs> And that's scary. That's not, that's like yeah. dementia Alzheimer's level, right? Like, you're like, yeah. wait a minute. I'm you, you, young. You, you're What's way happening? too young. Yeah, you're too young to be having it. But see, this is what happens when you deal with these toxic people, right? That residue. <laughs> 
that residue is still there. At least that's what everybody is, has been telling us through this show. Um, <laughs> what, hey, hey, look at the screen. Can you see the screen? I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, Somebody just told you. you. You see what he said? <laughs> you can write a book, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. I'm telling you, look, these people have got your back, okay? <laughs> I walked out without, with, what is this, without pain. Without pain at the store. <laughs> The brain, fog. Yeah, brain fog is real man this is this is real man i'm telling you man it's bad man okay all right brain fog all right so last word you ready i'm gonna say this word now you tell me in your own words how this word has been a part of your life the word is resilient resilient huh well, every time I thought I was falling apart and my world was falling apart and it did and it felt that way. And I thought, well, this is it. I could like never be the same again. I could just be the shell of a person forever. What happens? I can't let that happen. As long as I'm alive, I have breath in me. If I am alive, I am somehow going to turn this around and be resilient enough as a human being to be like, you know what? Yeah. This was awful. This was evil. This was my mistake or this was this person, whatever. But now, how can I turn this into the good? How can I yep. make something? There you go. The diamond there come you out go. of this. That's right? it. That's it. Yep. That's the thinking, <laughs> man. I'm telling you, man. That's it, man. I'm telling you, man. This was it, man. Uh, <laughs> all right. So seriously, I don't know. That was a really bad Bill Bill Paxton impersonation. All right. So um, what well, you got on the screen here? Uh, but they knew me, so they didn't flip out once I realized I it I came back. Yeah, that that would keep the police away. Yeah, go back in and pay for the stuff. Before, yes, that's pretty that. good. War, warrior world. Yeah, don't go into a store with brain fog and then walk out without paying. You do have to turn around and go back and pay. Yeah, that's they a good idea. Me down. They would have called the police on me. <laughs> yeah, you would have been in jail. You would have so been in jail. Totally yeah. gone. What All right, listen. Doing? You need to go and have a good day. We have gone in one hour and 14 minutes. And do me one, just once, just uh -huh. once. I want to see if you can do this for me. I want you to take a screenshot of you and I together. Okay. But you got to have the camera where we actually have your entire face in it because we've been having you chop your head off in different parts or, or your chin That's off. So, in different. so get it get in a good place that you have it in. I'm going to get in a spot here. And you're the first person I'm doing this with, but this is going to start becoming a norm as best I can. You're gonna take a screenshot of you and I, and make sure I get a copy of it. <laughs> okay. You can you can make as many faces as you want. Are you are you taking pictures while I'm talking? Just absolutely take as many screenshots as you as you want to, and and we got to and you got to send them to me. And everybody here, please like, comment, share, follow Crystal's page. Crystal, how can everyone find you if they're looking for you I'm on Instagram? At Crystal Nicole Black. <laughs> for right now but more to come so more to come there you go me. hey there you go more to come i like that matter of fact you need to get a you need to get a t-shirt or a tank top that says more to come hashtag more to come with the like your podcast your podcast show uh id right underneath it okay. time to connect. More to come. write that you know time to come oh i like that look at you man i told you all that creativity is gonna start coming out cha-ching okay so Cha all right anyhow we uh we better go everybody uh we love each and every one of you but we're out because oh my goodness all these people are writing you stuff so i gotta you gotta look at it it's on the screen uh thank you everyone for sharing uh you see what you see what jennifer says right too cute too Maybe cute about you. yeah well <laughs> you know she could but i would have to check her eyes but anyhow warrior in the world says together we can spread awareness and heal uh but more importantly today is friday so go and enjoy yourself and don't think about those toxic people and get your life back and uh, start being happy. Watch a comedy or dance, you know, dance. Go dance in your, dance. your kitchen or something. That's Keep favorite. yourself moving. Look at their hearts. Okay, you know, maybe you should have a podcast called Dance, 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 Life After Abuse. <laughs> so, I oh, I love it. All right. Hey, you, um, you know, yeah. with, the, with the greatest soundtracks every time you come on, you know, I or know. you should get... The, you know what? Every time you do a show, you, you got to put on like the newest music. You put on the newest I music. I totally will now that you said that. That would be an awesome podcast because people will tune in just to hear what tunes you're going to play. <laughs> so you're like, and wait, then. Oh, did I lose you? You there? You still got you? Okay. I got you there somewhere. You still there? All right. Can you hear me? We're good. Then you start interviewing 
different bands. You start interviewing different groups. You start. Perfect. I'm telling you, you get the the world is your oyster unless you hate oysters. Then it then the world is macaroni and cheese. I so, love oysters. Okay, all right, all right. We're out of here, you guys. Uh, this ends my Friday session <laughs> with the beautiful and talented Crystal Nicole Black. Thank you. Oh wait, I got to give you one of these. Hold on. little children that are trapped in my box uh, there they they scream every now and then all right have a good weekend and i will talk to you soon and uh, look forward to great things coming from you and your shows in the future okay Thank you. <laughs> we'll see you later see you later take care bye bye